Hey, it's Scott Rockfile back with another podcast review for you. Got to talk about the 2024 film Boy Kills World. I'll just cut to the chase. If you like movies like John Wick, Zissou, Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> very violent movies that have a lot of energy to them, have their own unique energy, this is your new favorite midnight movie. Boy Kills World came out in April. I remember seeing the first trailers, and I was stoked to see it. Bill Skarsgård in a martial arts revenge film that doesn't take itself seriously and uses the voice of Archer as the inner voice. Yeah, H. John Benjamin. Part of your enjoyment of this film is how much you like his voice, because he is the inner voice of this deaf mute character. Won't get into too many spoilers, but the story is what you see. In the matter of fact, don't watch the trailers. They give away way too much in the trailers. Um, but basically, Boy is the main character, Bill Skarsgård, is a young person. His family is killed by the overlord of this dystopian city that they live in. And um, he spends his entire life becoming a weapon to take it down, take the whole thing down. That's his plan. He's the weapon. That's what he does. And you go through the whole training thing. Uh, He deals with his precocious sister who he assumes is dead and he's a figment of his imagination and she pops up every once in a while and talks to him and stuff. That's kind of interesting. The whole movie moves with a kinetic energy like a Scott Pilgrim kind of thing. It just vibrates. It just moves fast. It has its own language, its own visual language. It it tells a story its way. It does some over-the-top things. You have these incredible fight scenes. Some of them go on way too long, and that's great. Um, And you have a decent story that kind of, kind of, ties everything together because he's finding out little things he didn't know the closer he gets to his goal, finding, finding Famke Jansen's character. Like I said, I was uh, stoked to see this, but I think it played in our theaters. If we got it at all, we got it for a week. But the week it came out, the pre-order was really cheap on Amazon. And I said, what the heck? I'll just pull the trigger because this looks like my kind of movie. Well, it finally came in. And what do you know? It was my kind of movie. Now, like I said, your enjoyment on whether or not you like the the guy who voices the Archer character, um, H. John Benjamin, he's a lot of the movie because, well, when Boy is a kid with his little sister, When the events of the film happen and make him deaf mute, he picks an inner monologue voice and he picks it from a video game they used to play as kids. So it all kind of makes sense. But I do like his voice and I like his reads on on things like Archer and some of the other movies he's done. And I think he does a great job in this. And I think it fits the character and it fits the movie. It takes the movie to another level and adds another layer of comedy over top of it. There's some very funny things that happen with the voiceover as Boy is trying to figure things out and you hear what's going on in his head. For a deaf mute character, we kind of needed this for that Silent Night movie that John Woo made back at Christmas. It'd be nice to have an inner monologue on some of these guys. But the inner monologue is very funny. They call attention to it that he chose that for his voice. He wanted that for his voice. So it works very well with the film. I think the martial arts is some of the best I've seen lately. There's not a whole lot of shaky cam. There's a lot of practical effects. There's some CG stuff, a lot of CG blood and stuff. But overall, Bill Skarsgård got himself in incredible shape and is doing all the stunts himself. It's incredible. Uh, Much like Keanu Reeves with John Wick or something, even more so. This is more like the Raid Redemption kind of fight scenes. It really is an action fan's dream. A lot of long fight scenes, a lot of creative fight scenes. There's some extras on the 4K. Uh, There's about an 18-minute behind the scenes and then some really, really short behind the scenes stuff. I wish they had kind of put all those together because I hate... Let's go to the menu. Okay, that takes a second. Then click on the extra. That takes a second to start. And then it plays for a minute, minute and a half. And then you go back to the menu, which takes a second. And then you have to pick the next one. And it's only 60 seconds long. And they could have a play all button or string them together because those were really short. But the first one, the 18-minute one, was actually pretty good. Went in some details. I didn't know about the producers. I didn't know Sam Raimi produced this and Roy Lee. Roy Lee is a producing partner who runs Vertigo Entertainment. He's produced like all the Godzilla and Kong movies of late. He's produced the How to Train Your Dragon movie. So there's a, there's a lot of, uh, oh, I didn't even mention Andrew Koji. Love this guy. Uh, he's in the Warrior TV series. It was on HBO and Cinemax. He is uh, has been in Bullet Train and a few other movies lately. He is almost unrecognizable in this. He, I was watching him for several minutes trying to figure out who he was. He's got this thick Australian accent. He's kind of over-the-top character, uh, loud, almost... Um, Almost like Venom, Eddie Brock a little bit, but even more so. Um, And it's just, 
it's over the top, and it's a really great character for him. And then you finally figure out who it is. I'm like, that's Andrew Koji. He usually plays the stoic, you know, Chinese kung fu martial artist, but he's nothing like that in this film. It's fantastic. Um, Famke Jansel's not in it much. Charlito Copley is not in it much. Most of the stars, I mean, basically it's the movie carried by Bill Skarsgård, Jessica Roth, and um, Michelle Dockery, who plays the assistant of the bad guy, bad girl. The movie moves at a quick pace. It's an hour and 50 minutes long. The video for the 4K, by the way, is good. It has no HDR on it, which a lot of people are like, what? But as SDR, it looks great. Standard, you know, um, HDR probably would have helped with some things. There's some light scenes that are blown out. There's some dark scenes that are a little crushed. But other than that, it, it, it is a clean-looking 4K. It's a native 4K transfer. You've got some 4K crispy shots, some close-ups with a lot of detail. It really is a nice 4K transfer. It's just missing that HDR pass. The Dolby Atmos, on the other hand, freaking fantastic. Where some modern movies are just okay, this one is active from beginning to end. From overhead things of birds explosions gunfire rain you name it your all your surround sound channels are mo- moving all the time i mean every speaker is used all the time it's a very immersive very active mix from beginning to end kudos to that for a movie that only made three million dollars at the box office and i can't find anything about how much it cost to make had to be pretty pricey the director moritz moore this is his first film He cut his teeth on commercials, and you can tell. He has a very gamer, very uh, anime kind of acumen. That's kind of the vernacular. And at the end of the movie, the credits are over um, some great anime scenes, like a Scott Pilgrim. It's very well done. And then, no spoilers, but there is an end credit scene. At the very, very end of the movie, I was letting the credits play out for whatever reason. I let them play out, and there was a scene at the end. Kind of like the Avengers eating shawarma scene. It's not a movie. It's not a scene that's going to change the whole movie for you, but it's nice if they put that on the end. All in all, this would be, if I were younger, this would be my kind of midnight movie. The movie I would would go to the theater on Friday or Saturday night at midnight and eat popcorn with my buddies and really enjoy it. So since we don't do a whole lot of movies, uh, midnight movies these days, you can buy it now on Blu-ray and, and 4K and enjoy it at home whenever you feel like having your own midnight movie. It's definitely that kind of movie. I don't call it a guilty pleasure because it's well made, well acted, and well executed. The action, again, is some of the best you will see. It's right up there with Bullet Train, John Wick movies, that kind of stuff. The choreography is incredible. The stunts are incredible. That Bill Skarsgård does as much as he does. I don't know how he didn't get hurt. He's in incredible shape. 6'3", not an ounce of body fat on that body, and he is kicking some serious ass of the film. All in all, it was a blast from beginning to end. Not the best movie I've seen all year, but... Definitely one of those that you'll pull out when the time is right. If you're looking for a new action movie in the vein of a Scott Pilgrim slash John Wick kind of thing, it's got a lot of funny. It's got a lot of action, got a lot of gore. I don't know what else you'd want. (laughs) Boy Kills World is available now, and I give it a recommendation for those that are so inclined to watch something. It is very bloody. Oh, and a warning for the, uh, um, the cheese grater scene. It's worse than the Evil Dead movie. So just telling you that if you're still thinking about that cheese grater scene from Evil Dead Rise. um, Yeah, this is a whole nother thing. Anyway, check out Boy Kills World. It's available now. I understand they've put out a video game based on the video game in the movie. And there is an animated series coming, which based on the end credits, I think that would actually be a pretty cool thing. If all the actors come back and do their roles, animated series could be good. Boy Kills World is available now. I give it a recommendation. Scott Rockfile, have a spectacular day, and thank you for listening.